Greetings everybody, Barry from H&W here. Today's video is one that I have probably had more requests than anyone in a long, long time. We are going to be reassembling the Bridgeport step pulley or J-head top half. Right now I have everything laid out here. Of course the, the kit, which would include your drive belt, your timing belt, and your six bearings. Um, the tube of grease I don't have because I'm gonna pack it with other grease. But the other parts we have, we have your bull gear housing, your top, your bull gear, um, spline gear hub, um, all your other auxiliary parts, your pulley, all your sliding housing parts, your top housing, of course our bolts and everything. So what we're going to start with is the bull gear housing. Um, we will be using, we will be moving around the shop a lot on this one. So first thing we do is we take our housing. The wash, lock washer, lock nut, our big snap ring, our bull gear, our spline gear hub. Let's head up front. First thing we're going to do is we are going to press our spline gear hub, I already have the key in it, into our bull gear. As you can see the bull gear, it's got the indented side and the flat side. This goes in the flat side. Um, I always clean my surfaces when I'm going back together. Aside for the time being. Next step, take your um, bull gear housing. Up here, we're going to install our two bearings. Many, many years ago, when these old ones were built, they actually had a thrust bearing in here. But I have not seen a thrust bearing in one of these in quite a long time. We don't use thrust bearings. There's really no reason for a thrust bearing. Really try to kind of go down. As you can see, you kind of just push it in there. It's not a super, super tight fit. All right. Next step's a fun one. We get to put the stamp ring back in. As you can see, it's my small set. There you go, snaps into place. Things good, flip it back over. So you're looking at the cavity, and we are now going to press the bull gear and spline gear hub down in. See, they just go on, slide down in there. Same thing. Got her in, spinning great, all right. Now we're going over to the vise, and we're going to install the lock washer and lock nut. Just lay it on top first, just to get it started. See the slot? Got your slot, just kind of work it down over there. And sometimes they are a bit of a challenge. We got going on here is my tab is bent in a little bit too far so i'm going to have to bend it back so let me grab a pair of pliers real quick okay now i've got tab straightened out slide it down on here lock washer tapered in goes down all right once you get it started get as far as you can by hand. All right, now stick it in our copper jawed vise.
hammer and our punch. Then your tab over. Take her off. Up and down. Spins nice and free. Okay, let's go back to the Area. Okay, now you're back. We're back here. We've got to put our T-nuts, T-slot, our T-bolts in. Three T-bolts. Spin in here. Go around the slot. I always like to spray just a little bit of WD-40 on the top of the um, quill housing. Okay, now these are loose, obviously. So, flip it over. Now, this is a brand new spline gear hub. So if you're replacing that part, you're gonna to wanna to get in here at the file and file all these out. Almost always there's little rollovers. So. It's on there. Okay, now you notice over here where your tag is, that basically your alignment is right over the top of that tag. So next we will put our nuts and the washers in. Now in this particular one, it takes a three quarter inch wrench. Um, some of them are take a 11 16 Right now I'm just going to put them on to get them finger tight. Okay, when I get them up finger tight, I just kind of slightly tighten them. I don't go crazy because I'm going to want to be able to tune it in. Okay, there we go. Now we're spinning here. We're going to do the small bull gear now. Okay, next step, we're going to install the small bull gear assembly. Now you notice the hub, the brass fork is down. So when you just always remember this while we do our reassembly, it's going to go down. So like that. All right, let's go up and press some bearings and press in a key. Okay, first we do the bottom bearing. Stick it on there. And underneath your press. Flip it over. Again, I like to leave the gear on. That way I'm not making a mistake here. Put your top bearing on. When you're doing the top bearing, just kind of make sure you're between the, on the inner race if possible. Top bearing on, and we'll go over to the press. You notice how a lot of times this key's got one end off and on. The shaved edge goes to the top. So we'll stick it in, and I just put these in using a, um, just using a vise. Okay, stick it in. Make sure you're getting it straight, there you go. There we go, that's it. Okay, that assembly's done. We'll go put it inside the housing. All right, now take your brass fork, which I'm sure you'll get the technical name for it once Virginia is editing the video. Make sure you go into the slot. Get yourself started. Get it where it feels pretty good. Take your soft mallet and you can start your bearing down. There we go, that's in. Now, we're gonna take our pin, it's gotta go down through, into the hole, and you're gonna to go to about flush when you're in the up position. Now be careful you don't ding your gears. And there we go. All right, now, there's out and there's in. We're ready to go. All right, now, at this point now, you have a decision to make. You can either leave it as you're just gonna oil it when you're running in low, or you can fill this cavity with grease. I always fill them with grease because I know too many people who just don't oil their machines like they should. So let me get some grease. We're gonna fill this cavity up and we'll go to the next step. Mm -hmm. 
when you're doing this, obviously you're gonna get yourself a little dirty, but that's okay. I'm trying to tuck the grease down underneath. See my fancy uh, installation tool. And this is just our normal EP1 and we send one tube with it. And this is what you would be, um, where you would be putting most of that tube of grease would be right in this area here. I just pour some, put some of this on here and then I'm gonna do the rest of this with my hand here in a minute. Kind of take what I, it doesn't fit. Here. Since this is all clean, I'm not too worried about putting it back in my grease bucket. All right, set that aside. Nice clean rag. Hand off. Wipe off any grease I got where it didn't belong. Okay, our next step, we're going to be putting on our aluminum cap over the top. So this would be the oiler, which I always make sure they're cleaned out anyway, but this would be what you would be oiling this uh, if you go with the oil. You have a wavy washer that will ride on top of the bearing. What I always do is I just take a tiny bit of grease, put it inside, stick the wavy washer on, that way it stays. We just go over the top. And this is the same thing, just be, you know, get a good down on it. There is a um, pin. Sometimes there's two pins. All right, put it down on. Make sure it still turns okay, which it does. Okay. Now we have five flathead. Five flathead or not flathead, um, oval head, flat head, flat screwdriver screws that go in. Again, a little test, make sure you're good. Yep, get out of gear, turns good. Work back into gear, good shape, okay. All right. Now, our next step is we are going to be putting on our, um, our timing belt pulley. So I like to be able to see the keyway when I do this. Okay, obviously if you've torn your head apart, hopefully you have your flange off. But if you don't, again, you see the tapered part goes down, the part that's more flat goes up. You gotta line up your keyway. There's really no way to watch this on a video. You just have to be able to do it. flashlight to make sure and same thing if you have a little arbor or something you can use to uh, go over the top of the whole screw there we go now you can just kind of if you want to take a quick look make sure your key is where it belongs which it is and in a perfect position, you see how this is right? Almost flush with that lip right there. Okay, next step, we put our nut back on. This is a 15 16 wrench. I use a little, my small little impact. A little 15 16 That's it, okay, now we are on. Our next step is going to be the sliding housing assembly. Yep. All right, we are now ready to do the sliding housing assembly, which has your front pulley, your spindle pulley hub, your sliding housing, your two lock, locking washers, your spacers, and your two bearings, which are part number 1251. We're side right now first thing we're going to do is we are going to press our sliding housing back into our pulley again as you can see I already have the key in now this goes in exactly like this so no problems 
simple. Set that aside. We will now put our bearings and our spacers inside of our sliding housing. Put your two bearings and your two spacers. Sliding housing over underneath your press. First bearing goes in. Spacers, top bearing, until they touch, that's it. Now we're going to go put our locking washers on. At least we're going to put the outer locker washer on. So, the outer locking washing, put it your piece if you have your copper jog device, that's great. Put it in, and it should just thread on most of the way. Obviously, you probably already watched my video with Sam of disassembling this, but he's not here yet today, so he's making Grandpa do it all himself. All right, put that on, got that on. Coming back, we'll be going back over to the press to put our pulley assembly in. Pulley assembly in the press. Your spacers are nice. We'll slide down. Center it. Final step for this assembly is to put the inner locking washer in. When you do this, you do not want it laying all the way down. You want to have a little space here because as you tighten this, this thing could slightly move. So, it on. Now, sometimes this one goes on a whole lot harder. If it, as yours came off hard, expect it to go back on hard. Yeah, the top threads of, of that, of your spindle pulley hub, tend to get um, boogered up over years of drawbar punching and hitting and things like that, so. And this one did come off pretty difficult. I actually re-threaded everything and it's still gonna be a fun one to put back on. Trust me, this is going on a lot easier than it came off. All right. And this thing goes down to tight. If yours goes on super easy, you may want to consider a couple drops of blue Loctite to hold it in position. As you saw how hard this one went on, not really gonna be necessary here. Plug it up sure it spins freely and there we go we have our sliding housing assembly all put together now we're going back to the our assembly area. housing is complete we're going to go on and assemble our belt housing so what you do is now a lot of times you would mark the holes that are good I already checked this one and I, and all of my holes are still good so the way I do this is first you turn your belt housing over and you'll see your belt, your brake in here. Now I've already checked the brake in here and it's a good brake. You have your four compression springs to go in here. What I do is I actually dip them in grease. And all I'm doing is making, putting them in here so they'll stay. Now we have those in there. I like to spray just a little bit of WD-40 in here. There you go. Now, I have already checked that this runs smoothly up and down. So, what you do is you take it and you do your best to line your holes up with the center and stick it in there. There you go. See how nice and smooth that one is? 
Now then this is where a nice little piece of board helps. So what you're gonna do is we're gonna flip this over and try to line everything up. And this board is gonna go right there. So pick it up, kind of grab it like this. Okay, and you can see I'm not even close to where my, my holes line up. Okay, so, take your spanner wrench, just slightly lift it up, just enough that you're gonna get some of your pressure off of the springs. And you're just moving this just a little bit where your holes line up. All right, very close. There you go. If you look there, you can see the holes are very close to lining up there. When you get to this point, you can take an Allen wrench, a screwdriver, anything you want just to make sure that you're, you're about right in center. Okay. At this point right now, we're going to put our cam ring back on. Again, I take a little bit of grease. I just kind of grease the inside of it. It's not necessary, but it's, you know, it's just nice to do. Put your cam ring on top Get it down on there. there we go all right now set it to where your low spot is there take your camering pin and i'm going to say nine times out of ten you ought to be putting in new camering pins allen wrench just push it down Go through the camering find your okay. go ahead until you're tight the same thing on the other side. Okay, once you have your camering pins in tight, you're gonna put in your two very small um, socket set screws. And what this is doing is these are gonna tighten down on the threads of your camering pins and hold them in there solid. Get these in here nice and snug. There we go. Up and down, just like it's supposed to. Okay, our next step, we will be putting the belt housing onto the bulgur housing. This is kind of an important thing to remember. Tip it up, take your timing, your V-belt, stick it in here. And because this has to be on here, I cannot tell you how many times I've forgotten this step and gotten to taking this, taking this belt housing off a second time. So you have it up here, take your timing belt, and we will go over here. You go down over that, and you can kind of keep your fingers up in here. It is, just be careful, you don't want to pinch yourself. These are, get to be a bit of a pain. we go. Now we're on. See, yeah, we're up still a little bit because we got pins and aren't lined up. Once you get your pins lined up, kind of. There we go. When you're doing this, you can either set it up in neutral or in high. Don't try to do this in the low position. So. All right, once we're to this point, we can take our six socket head cap screws that go along the bottom. Put these in. It's not necessary to go 100% tight on these right now. We just want them snug. Okay. okay. Now, our next step is going to be to reinstall the top flange on the timing belt pulley. You have these four very small flathead screws. And the reason you're waiting to this point is because getting the timing belt on is much easier 
after it's all without this flange on. Spin it. Again, if you're in high or in neutral, this will spin. If you're in low, it doesn't spin very easy. All right, so we are now to the point where we're ready to put the motor on. There are many different J-head motors. This is the old Fairbanks and Morris motor um, that has the tin top. There's also one of these with the cast iron top. There's a GE pancake motor. I mean, there's a US Motors motor. So you may have one of that, all of, the, of any style, but they all attach the same. Motor. Top. Try not to pinch yourself. Get you screws or bolts. Okay. Focus on. Pull back. So what you do is take it, put your belt on. I usually it doesn't really matter which one you go on, just pick one. Put your belt on, plug it back. We're now ready to put on our locking bolt. Now this particular machine, being that it belongs to a customer, um, the, they don't have the lock on the one side, they don't care. So I'm gonna put it back the way they had it. But normally you would have the part that has the handle on it. The one on this side is the critical one. You want to make sure when you're back in the locked position, you still have room for your lock. If you like right here, that would never work because your lock, you would never get it completely locked. So you can try a couple different things. Turn this over. Shockingly, that sometimes changes it. Which it did, but it went further away. Go back this way again. again. Yeah, so your options are find a thicker washer, a thinner washer. We'll find a washer that'll work real quick. All right, so I found a washer, a little thinner, and basically I'm just using. A half 13 washer um, they come with one but half the time when I get them in here they're long gone and so okay so obviously to change it you know how to do this your J head you know how to change it get it in place lock it in place so we are now all together we're in high so we're gonna wire it up and we're gonna test run it and see how it sounds okay. we are now wired up let's turn it on and see what it sounds like There we go. We have now successfully rebuilt a Bridgeport J-head or step pulley milling machine on the top half. If you have any questions, please give us a call. And as always, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Have a great day.